Hello everyone and welcome to topic number three in the OCR computing course. We're looking at uh, binary logic today, a bit of lag in my PowerPoint slide there, but we're looking at binary logic. Uh, one of my favourite topics for whatever reason, um, I think the reason why I like this topic is that it took me personally a while for it to click. Um, when I learnt this, I didn't understand it straight away. And when I did go over it at home and started to learn it for myself it really clicked and I found it quite satisfying so what I would say if you don't understand this topic first time around don't panic um, but obviously if you do understand it then great and hopefully I'll, I'll get you to understand it in the end so we're going to look at what, what binary is binary might be an unfamiliar term to you uh, so if you look at in terms of binary so our numbering system the human system that most countries use you know obviously in England we use uh, I mean, it's difficult to describe because it's not something you ever talk about, but our numbering system actually only uses 10 digits, and we call it, technically, the technical term for it is base 10. It's called a base 10 system. We only ever use the digits 0 to 9. So for the, um, for the number 15, we're actually only using 1 and 5 digits. We all know that, but it's not something which you would necessarily be taught. I mean in place value like we did in primary school that does actually come into binary we'll look at that in a, a couple of topics to come. Um, so binary um, yeah so even though we don't use them on a daily basis there are actually many systems numbering system base base uh, 15 called hexadecimal which we'll look at again in the future um, so there are other numbering systems and one of which is called binary and this is a base 2 system meaning that it only consists of two digits 0 and 1 um, so as opposed to te uh, 10 digits it consists of two digits and um, computers use these because um, it symbolizes voltage. Everything in a computer is represented in binary form. Um, it makes up pictures, it makes up audio, makes up everything you do. The CPU only works with binary. Everything to do with computers is either off or on because that's how voltage works. That's how a current is. A current can only be off or on. It's like a light bulb. Um, often the symbol for a light bulb um, on, on light switch is just a straight line and then zero. And um, that is representing the binary um, equivalent which is just zero and one. And that is the reason why binary is used in computers. We're going to look at how binary is actually represented, how the computer converts digital data into binary form. We'll look at that in the future. We're not looking at today's video. What we are looking at is uh, binary logic gates. But um, a little bit of revision maybe for you if, you, if you've covered this before, or um, just an example of what we're going to look at. A bit is simply a binary digit, and it's either 0 or 1. And a byte is 8 bits. So that's how binary looks like when it's uh, used in conjunction with other bits, um, but we'll look at that in the future. So um, we're looking at logic gates today, we're looking at what logic is. Um, logic is basically Boolean algebra. Um, uh, Boolean is either true or false, as you may have done if you've coded languages such as Python or most programming languages. Well, all programming languages will use this, but not all of them refer to it as Boolean. Um, but anyway, doesn't really respect doesn't require you to know much about Boolean uh, yet. So um, logic. I'm talking more about maths and computer science. Uh, test whether a statement or set of statements are true or false. And the Boolean values are true or false, and they're represented by zeros and ones. So two statements here, uh, 15 plus 12 equals 27. That's obviously true if you add that up. 27 is actually the answer. And that will result in true. If you ran that through a programming languages language, um, it would result in true. And this, 15 plus 12 equals 29, is false. And we'd represent that with true, being 1 and false being 0 um, and those are the boolean values and these are the binary values and you can sort of use them interchangeably just true is 1 false is 0 um, so there are three, three logic operations that form the basis of incredibly complex computer systems so everything in our computer is formed with these three um, different types of operations and or not and um, their functions can be represented by logic gates, which we'll look at in the next couple of slides. We'll look at um, this is the AND gate, this is the OR gate, and this is the NOT gate. Um, and there are, actually sta uh, there are actually seven standard logic gates. Um, so you've got gates like uh, NAND, NOR, etc., which are, which are mainly which are combinations of these three gates. But fortunately, you won't need to look at them if you're doing, um, if you plan to do A level computer science. Uh, you will be looking at them or even university and um, fortunately for you you don't need to look at them uh, now so let's have a look at the NOT gate first this is the simplest gate we're also going to look at truth tables as well so this is the symbol for the NOT gate you've got to memorize this um, 
quite a lot of exam questions I've seen actually give it, they give you this symbol, but I wouldn't rely on it. I've seen some exam questions where we don't where they don't give this symbol to you, so make sure you learn it. Um, quite simple, a triangle with a circle. And um, the, the role of a not gate is to invert the input. So the input is A here, so it reverses the input and outputs the opposite. Um, so yeah, this gate's only got one input, but it's got one output as well. Lots of gates will have multiple inputs, but mainly they only have one output. I can't really think of any examples that have any outputs. Um, so yeah, it basically reverses and does the opposite of what the input is. And the way you would say this is the output is equal to not A. So um, a truth table, um, this will make sense in a minute, a truth table uh, lists all of the outputs and the resulting output. Uh, sorry, lists all of the inputs and the resulting output from a logic circuit in order to keep track of all possible combinations. So a truth table um, will basically have a column for all the inputs and a column for an output and it will list all possible combinations. So here the only two possible combinations are 1 and 0 because we've only got two options here. We're looking at binary, true or false, two options and uh, two outputs for each for each uh, input. So um, basically like I say it does the opposite. So if the input is 1 we're going to get the opposite, which is zero. So if it's true, it's false. If it's false, then it's made true. It basically just does exactly the opposite of your input. Fairly simple, I think. Um, it gets a bit more complicated as we'll look at in the next video, um, but uh, fairly simple, I think. So slightly, slightly more complicated looking at the AND gate here. So this is a symbol for the AND gate. Make sure you learn this. Um, sort of like a. Um, don't know how you'd really describe it, a half circle with a square sort of extended like that. Um, so this gate has two inputs, um, or we're going to be dealing with two inputs here, um, and one output. So this is how you'd write it in a little formula thing like I showed you before. Um, you'd And by the way, out, lots of letters can be used for this, and lots of letters can be used for this. This is just my way of um, representing it. So out, out for output is equal to A and B. So uh, this is for quite complicated, difficult to get ahead around a little bit. This for all, so I'll read it to you. If A and B are true, then the output is also true. If not, then the output is false. So um, this, a way of interpreting this, or the interpretation of this, is that um, both at, both inputs must be true in order for there to be an output of true. For any other combination, the output is false. So if you look at the truth table of this, now we have two inputs. We actually have four. Um, possible combinations of the inputs and um, if we apply this to the rule um, both inputs must be true in order for the output to be true so both inputs here are false and so we must get a false combination but here we've got one false and one true but according to the rule both must be true in order for it to be true so that's the same for this one, both both of these are false because one of them is false. But here both are true and that results in both in, in the output being true. Um, try and get your head around this, maybe pause the video, read over what I've written and look at the truth table, see if it makes sense. Um, and hopefully, hopefully, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, just a tip to make sure you get all the combinations. The max you're ever going to get is four combinations in uh, this course because there's only going to be two inputs. Um, if you don't understand what I'm about to say, don't worry. I will go over it in a future video. But um, you can see this actually in binary. This means zero. This means uh, zero. This means one. This means two. This means three. If you don't understand that, don't worry. But um, that's just a little tip to make sure you get all the combinations. So finally, we're gonna look at the OR gate. Um, again, this is sort. Of, I don't know how to describe it. It's sort of like a um, a crescent sort of shape. I, I guess you would say like a, a crescent moon. I'm not sure. Um, so again, remember this uh, shape. So um, the gate has only two inputs, A and B, and one output. So this is how you'd write it: out output equals A or B. So again, for sort of um, official rule is if either A or B or both are true, then the output is also true, else the output is false. Right, difficult to make sense of what that means. Um, so, but but what, it, what it means if you interpret it, if you look over it, um, it means that if either or both inputs are true, then the output will be true. And if both outputs are false, then the, then the output is false. So... Um, yeah, if we look at our truth table for this, you also need to be able to fill in and complete truth tables for uh, simple or not an AND gate and uh, circuits. So um, here we've got both inputs are false. So um, if both in inputs are false, then the output is false, as we have. But the OR gate is sort of asking if if one of them is true, then 
both are true. And you can see in these two examples, one of one of the inputs is true and therefore the output is also true. But here it can also be both. So this would be the same as the and rule, but we're looking at both. So it sort of it will look at the look at the first input, sees that it's true, and it will sort of ignore the second input and just automatically output true. Um, so quite a long video, ten minutes, um, just about. Rewatch it if you need to. Um, do a bit of further reading if you don't understand. Um, but next video I'll be looking at a couple of exam questions where the logic gates are actually combined together into more complex circuits and that's also part of your course um, I didn't want to fit it in this video because it's getting a bit long and uh, I'm quite tired, I've spoken quite fast so um, yeah make sure you check out the next video and um, yeah thanks a lot for watching